go ahead and go on to the next side here. Now we're going to apply some deductive reasoning and uh, the law of detachment. We're going to talk about this a little bit. So we've got two methods we're going to look at so determine if it, to determine if a conclusion is valid. Method number one is we're going to analyze the statements. So we're going to look at them. So the given, to go on a field trip, a student must turn in a permission slip. So i got to get my highlighters here. Permission slip. Mariana turned in her permission slip. Conclusion, Mariana can go on the field trip. So step one is identify the hypothesis and conclusion. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion. I'm just going to shorten them a little bit. Okay. So what is my Q? It says to go on the field trip. A student must turn in the permission slip. Mariana turned in her permission slip. Uh, therefore, Mariana can go on the field trip. So my hypothesis is a student turns in a permission slip. A student turns in a permission slip. And we know this is the hypothesis because if I turn this into a proper if-then statement, it would say, if a student turns in a permission slip, the student can go on the field trip. So a student turns in a permission slip. And let's highlight that. And we're even going to highlight the matching statement for Mariana turning the permission slip. Okay. Uh, the conclusion then is the student can go on the field trip. The student can go on the field trip. And we even have to add some words when we separate it like this. And that, I'm going to match the conclusions here. And then our step two is we're going to analyze the conclusion. The given statement, Mariana turned in her permission slip satisfies the hypothesis. Okay? Mariana turned in a permission slip. That is the same a student must turn in a permission slip. She satisfied that requirement. She did it. It's now true. By the law of detachment, Marina can go on the field trip, which matches Q. Is a true or valid conclusion? Okay? So, by the law of detachment, so we know if this is true, then we get to do this. So, if a student turns in a permission slip, we get to go on a field trip. Mariana turned in a permission slip, that's true, therefore the conclusion is also true. Mariana can go on the field trip. And that is our Q statement. It just occurred to me that I mixed these up. This should say P, and this should say Q. I'm glad I caught that. Look at that, if you caught that ahead of time, I'm so sorry. Some of you may be like, well, Mr. Tim, this is a little bit off. That's why. My bad. So, now we're going to look at a different set of examples, and we're going to use a different method. So we're going to use a Venn diagram, which you saw me actually use earlier. So if a figure is a square, then it is a polygon. A figure is a polygon. Conclusion, a figure is a square. So step one, let's draw a Venn diagram. Draw a Venn diagram. Show the relationship between the hypothesis and the conclusion of the conditional. So we have the hypothesis, which is right here. If the figure is a square. Then it is a polygon. Okay. So we're going to have uh, this figure, and, or I'm sorry, we're going to have a circle that represents squares, right? And that square is inside um, here, 
all polygons, right? Which there are many polygons, not just squares. But what does it say? The figure A is a polygon. So we have figure A, it says it's a polygon. So it's inside of polygons, which there's many different types of polygons. So can we all agree that figure A could be a different type of polygon? It could also be a square, right? It could go either way. Well, because of that, we have to conclude that figure A, um, our conclusion that figure A is a square is not valid because step two is draw the possible locations for figure A. I actually kind of skipped ahead a little bit. So step two, draw, we already did that, the possible lo locations for figure A. And what do we know? The given says the figure A is a polygon. We just talked about that. So we did that. We drew that in the polygons. We also drew it in the squares because it could go either way. And step three is analyze the conclusion. We always in there. It's only one S, isn't it? Okay. Because of the locations of figure A in the Venn diagram, we can say that the conclusion is invalid. We know this because it's a polygon. That doesn't tell us it's a square. It might be, could be. But if it has choices, then that's we can't conclude anything. And we just know it's a polygon. That's the only conclusion we can make. So there we go. There's a method using Venn diagrams. Last thing we're going to talk about today, again, pause this if you need to, by the way. Um, I don't know if you can see everything I was writing down, so make sure you pause this as we go. But let's go ahead, and we're going to end on talking about the law of syllogism. Okay, take a minute, write this down. What is the law of syllogism? It says, if P then Q, and if Q then R are true statements, then if P then R is a true statement. So what does it say? If you get a job, then you will earn money. If you earn money, then you will buy a car. What is a valid conclusion? If you get a job, then you will buy a car. Now we can make this ridiculous too. I could say, hey, if I can breathe underwater, then I can live in space. And if I can live in space, then I can land on the moon. Therefore, if I can breathe in water, I can land on the moon. So it's just connecting A to B, B to C, and saying, hey, ultimately A connects to C. I'm going to write this down again. We're going to go on back. And we're going to look at this. Let me move this up for our purposes. If Ebony takes a vacation, so this is our hypothesis. If Ebony takes a vacation, then she will go to the Grand Canyon. If Ebony goes to the Grand Canyon, I'll get another color here. Excuse me. So Ebony goes to the Grand Canyon, then she will hike the Colorado River. All right, so let's look at this. If Ebony takes a vacation, she will go to the Grand Canyon. If Ebony goes to Grand Canyon, then she will have the Colorado River. What is a valid conclusion? The logical conclusion is, if Ebony takes a vacation, then she will hike the Colorado River. Boom, and we see that that makes sense because we have our starting hypothesis and matching up here, we're ending with our logical conclusion without the connecting point and I didn't put then. Okay, let's do this again. All right, if you do not get enough sleep, then you will be tired. If you are tired, then you will not do well on your test. My logical conclusion is, if I do not get enough sleep, what am I doing here? Not spelling, right? Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Do not get 
enough sleep. Goodness. Then, I will not spell well in my math work. I know, I will not do well on my test. Boom, there we go. Let's look at that. Our starting conclusion, if I do not get enough sleep. And our last connector is, ultimately I will not do well on my test. That is the law of syllogism. With that said, go forth, do math, do good deductive reasoning, and peace out. Bye guys.